Hey, I'm Ethan with GoBuilda, and um, today we're going to be looking at the Robot in Three Days. So, the Robot in Three Days was a project we undertook at the very beginning of the first Tech Challenge 2020-2021 season, the ultimate goal season. Um, and we set off to build a robot in three days to complete a lot of the challenges that we can see um, were laid out by FCC this year. This, this meant for us to be able to uh, collect and shoot rings, and ideally we hoped to be able to interact with this wobble goal, but we didn't end up getting there um, in the stream. We ended up streaming for 15 hours total. About 14 of those ended up being us uh, prototyping, brainstorming, designing, implementing, building this robot so that you can see in front of you. Um, and that's split up into four different videos that you can see archived on YouTube. The first three are just the day one, two, and three. Um, and in each of those, we go into different aspects of the robot, um, and we progressed fairly linearly through the robot process. The last one is an overview. The last hour of our 15 hour stream, we looked at and did a really deep dive into this robot in its completed state. This exact one that you can see in front of you is a little bit different. It's been rewired and has some components that we've beta tested on this robot. It's a great platform for us to test new parts before they are released. And we're really happy with how it ended up. We were able to um, get a robot that can cycle these rings into the top goal. And um, the wobble goal prototypes that we built seemed pretty promising. They were definitely not a, um, a final version by any means, but they seemed like they could be fairly effective at completing that task with some more time. Um, the people involved in that were myself, Ethan, um, there's also Luke, and Jacob from an FTC team 7236 who traveled down and built with us. And with that, we had about 15 years of competition robotics experience. So definitely don't measure your team's success up to what we were able to accomplish in a pretty short amount of time. Our goal was to make a robot that would pretty well work, but um, wouldn't win competitions and wouldn't be the best possible thing. Um, realistically, you spend a lot more time prototyping and fleshing out ideas instead of finding something that works and running with it like we did a little bit more on our stream. Looking at the robot itself, it's all based on a strafer chassis, which let us hide the drive motors inside of the frame rails, which really made this whole robot possible. Um, a lot of this robot actually is in the center space of the chassis, so the strafer chassis let us have a lot more flexibility there. Um, the intake system and the shooter especially are pretty low to the ground and um, really would not work out with a more traditional drivetrain. The intake system uses two 312 RPM yellow jacket motors. It uses seven uh, 72 millimeter gecko wheels as two independent rollers, the first roller and the second. The first roller um, really just starts to pull the ring into the robot, you can see here. Um, it starts the process of getting it all inside of the robot. And um, as you're pulling that ring in, it starts to move toward this second counter rotating roller made of 48 millimeter disc wheels. So um, you can see as this rolls in, it will pull the ring in and will pick it up off the floor with this second roller set. Um, then that second roller set will move it into the next roller of gecko wheels uh, and that will get compressed up against the black plastic plate you can see right here. Um, the rest of that move is completed by these round belts that you can see and that will move it into the gravity fed magazine for the shooter. Um, and that ends up happening pretty fast on a full robot. Once it is inside of the magazine, it's ready to be shot by the shooter assembly. That is made up of a 5000 series motor uh, with an 8 rex output. Um, here we actually have a final production version in the stream we were running on prototypes that had a lot of 3D printed parts. Um, that is running on a very slight reduction to a using a round belt and that will spin up to somewhere around 5000 RPM. You can see it does expand a fair amount which helps with our compression. Directly opposite that you can see this 72mm um, Rhino wheel. It's just solidly mounted and is a nice high friction surface as a, a backboard for that shooter. Um, once you spin the shooter wheel up to speed, there is a super speed servo down in the robot which um, actually pushes the rings into contact with 
the shooter wheel and when it's spinning at the full speed it starts shooting out of there fairly fast and that's really the basis of the robot there's not a whole lot to it it's not very complex um, but it's a great example of how different mechanisms interact with each other on a finished robot and since this robot was designed to really show concepts and to show how parts interact with the game elements, this is not something that we have assembly instructions or bill of materials for. It's just designed to show teams um, an example of what you can do with your build of parts and something you can do with or uh, for this FTC season. If you want to catch more of our live content, you can see us over on Twitch, where GoBuilda TV. You can also get there by going to www.gobuilda.tv. If you have any questions um, that you can't ask us live, you can always give us a call or shoot us an email to tech at gobuilda.com. Um, and as always, thank you guys for watching.